Right, welcome back. Gonna need the big gun. Right, uh, welcome back. Oh, blimey. Gonna need the big guns for this. Cat! Oh! Oh! Oh, blimey. Welcome back. We're gonna need the big guns for this. Right, off you go. Tooty tidy, bugger offy. Right. This is the stripped gear out of my linear actuator. So, I'm going to make another one out of Ali Bronze. Why Ali Bronze? Because that was all my local scrap metal merchant had in stock. I was going to use brass, but um, they haven't got any brass big enough, so uh, Ali Bronze it is. I've got enough. Here is the uh, tricky bit with this. These teeth are um, over at an angle. So you can see the damage on the bloody thing. I think it was self-inflicted, you know. I, th I hit the end stop a couple of times and um, the power supply can supply, I don't know, I think a stand of 15 amps. So um, the, the motor just basically chewed its way through this. Anyway, here's the, um, the fourth axis, the rotary axis off the uh, mill. And uh, in order to cut, re cut new gear teeth in the uh, new piece that we're going to replace this with, uh, I need to tilt the, um, this over at the same angle as the uh, teeth, which is tricky because I don't have any method of doing that. Or do I? I have this very old T-slot table, which I think I'm going to turn into a sign table. So uh, uh, what we end up with is, uh, if you elevate this end, or any end, doesn't matter, um, by uh, a known amount, then you can, um, the sign of this angle will tell you what the tilt is, very accurately. If you use gauge blocks under this end, then um, you can get some really quite accurate results. But you need a round, bar at either end with a known distance between the two in order to work that out. That's the hypotenuse. Um, so I have some bar. There we go, there's some bar. So uh, this is the bar, it's 28 mil diameter um, hydraulic rod out of the scrap bin from a, a local hydraulics company and as you can probably see I think it might be bent. However, I only need a short section out of each end. The bend, I think, is around here. Um, so I only need a piece out of there and a piece out of there. So, bearing that in mind, I think I need to just um, put the old powered axle through the middle and split this into two, and then we can see about how to machine it. So why use this? I hear you cry. Well, it's hydraulic bar. Uh, hydraulic uh, ram actuator bar uh, and it's very very tight tolerance on its diameter so um, that's going to make relatively accurate tool. Now this has got uh, dings and marks in it but uh, that won't matter because if you take a, a, a section that's long enough which it will be it'll be same width as that then it will tend to the right diameter if that's the right word Anyway, uh, so this is what we're going to do. We are going to put a piece there and a piece there, but we are going to chop them down. I'm just going to roll off if I'm not careful. We're going to chop them down so that uh, the exact centre of this diameter is right on the corner of that um, piece, and then we're going to screw them on. It's, it really is as simple as that. That's what we're going to do. This um, uh, slot is right to the center point of the bar. So, if 
I go to manufacture, there you go, and we look, I've got an adaptive strategy. Don't know if it's going to work, but uh, let me just simulate that. It's a 6mm cutter. There you go, that's what it's going to do, hopefully. I should mention this is how I'm going to clamp it down. So uh, two V blocks. Um, I will sweep it along here to make sure that it's uh, parallel to the axis of the mill. Um, and my um, G54 uh, center point is the top of the bar and uh, at the on the center line. So uh, I will sweep it left and right. Oh, sorry, backwards and forwards, uh, and get it all lined up, and then we'll. Um, then we'll see it machine. So I'll do it, I'll set it up off camera because it's tedious. Okay, uh, this bar is now as trammed in as I can get it without spending hours doing it. Um, I've marked out the section that I need, which is 155, and um, there's the center line. So I've zeroed my G54 at the center line. Um, I've done the the ow, in my ear. Done the wiggler uh, uh, and found the center line in the y-axis. Um, now I just need to put the correct uh, six mil roughing end mill, carbide end mill in and um, we can get on and actually have a go at cutting this. The, um, uh, what you can't see, maybe you can, down the back here is a parallel that's uh, abutted against these um, uh, V-blocks and clamped down. So uh, we've got clamps pushing the bar down and we've also got clamps stopping the bar from moving backwards. Uh, and the good thing with this is if I, once this one is done, if it works properly, uh, we should be able to just take this bar out, put the next bar in and just machine it. Okay, here's mud in your eye, another tool broken, so it will start. looks reasonable to me so um, let's go on with something else. Apparently that's going to take half an hour for Sally the Sile to do this part so uh, while she's up to that I'm going to use some gunge end and engine degreaser and clean this. I'll do that off camera because uh, it's not very exciting. Right this is what we've got after the first pass. It's nicely um, scalloped away, crack an edge. Uh, there's half a millimetre of material to remove I've changed the tool, we're now ready to hit cycle start for the second op. Start. Uh, if anything's going to ruin the camera, it's going to be um, flooding the poor thing with coolant. Look at the state of that. Oh, we'd buy that.
here's the setup for drilling the holes. The bar is um, upside down, so we're resting on the machine, the, the corner machine, machined corners. Yeah, you know what I mean. The, we're resting on the machined corners uh, of the of the piece, um, and I've just put a uh, a drill chuck in the quill, and we've lined up roughly with the end. This doesn't have to be that precision. It has to be in the middle, but it doesn't have to be that precision in the x-axis. So um, um, that's sorted. I'll just put the wiggler in and then find the centre of the bar. Uh, oh, there we go. Now, if I zero that... I zeroed X, uh, sorry, zeroed Y on the front side when the wiggler kicked over and then uh, we've gone to the other side, the back, and uh, that's the, when it kicked over, that's the number. So if we get that number, divide by two, I think there's a shortcut for that, but uh, I'm going to do it manually. Right, so I'm going to overtype that to 16.819. It's close enough. Hit return. There we go. So now, if I go to zero, um, uh, I can't do that just yet. I need to just lift the tool up a bit. Let me just, there we go, clear the wiggler from the work. Right, so if I go into here and G0, Y0, or return, there we go. The tool has, or the, the spindle, has moved directly over the centre line of the part. So uh, now we have um, the centre this way and also the position here. So now I can chuck the drill in that I need and uh, we'll see about drilling the hole. I'm going to do this manually rather than um, run a programme because I just need to drill a hole. So um, what we're going to do is turn the spindle on, M3. 1000 revs is probably good enough uh, and I'm going to drive the tool in on the hand wheel. Here we go. I'll just change the uh, spotting drill for uh, one of my new split point drills and I'll go straight through with a 5mm. M5, stop the spindle. Job, as they say, is a good one. Just uh, for clarity, at the other end I put a dial gauge on a mag, ba mag base uh, and set it to zero so uh, I can just flip the part around, uh, clamp it up again and then repeat the exactly the same operation at the other end. Right, here's my slightly sketchy setup for uh, pushing these uh, bars onto the corner corner of the casting. I need to deburr them a bit. Um, I'm pulling it that way with, with a couple of toolmakers clamps and I'm pushing it that way with a couple of toolmakers clamps. So uh, it is pretty tight against the edge. Uh, also it just needs a tiny little tap that way to get it in line, um, which I will promptly do. Then I'm going to drill by hand. Okay, that one's done. I'll do the rest of these uh, off camera because it is a bit dull uh, and um, we'll catch up when I've finished them. If I was an expert, and believe me, I'm not. I think I might have um, put some uh, flats on there to start with, but uh, there we go. 
I need to countersink these obviously. Or just mill a flat off. Might just mill a flat off, it's easier. You'll have to take my word for it, but it's pulled that in really quite tightly. So uh, yeah, that's um, that's good. So uh, I'll do the other end off camera. Right, here we go, the finished thing. Um, that looks all right. The, uh, the screws have pulled it in nice and tight into the, uh, into the corners. Um, looks okay. The eagle eye would have noticed I got that one wrong, but uh, we'll gloss over that. So, uh, yeah, all in all, I'm quite pleased with that. Let's uh, just go and check it out on the mill, because there's a problem. Right, here we go. Here we go. If we put it over on that way, absolutely fine, flat. If we put it over on this way, and we have a wobble. That is uh, a 20, I don't know if you can see that very well, but uh, that is 0.2 of a millimetre. So over six inches, we're out by 0.2 of a millimetre. So will it make much difference to the operation of this thing? Not really. It'd be nice to get it right, but uh, yeah. I'll, what I'm going to do is have a, a look at that next time. A bit more of an examination and see what we can find out. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you've been, uh, enjoyed all the shenanigans trying to make uh, this old plate into uh, a surface plane. I, I think it's gone quite well, to be honest. Um, okay, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, do hit the subscribe and the bell spanner, and um, we'll see you on the next one when uh, we'll do a little bit more of an examination on this and see if we can find out if I can take out that 0.2 millimeter twist. It's probably down to the fact that these bars were a bit more uh, bent than I uh, originally thought, but uh, we can put it on, the, on my surface plate and have a little uh, Furkle around and see if we can find out if there's uh, something we can do about it. Anyway, take care, stay safe, see you next time. Bye.